Well, hi, I'm Bill, and if this is the first time dropping into my channel, welcome. This is really the video I did not want to make. Uh, but I said early on, I'll show the bad with the good, and really I did something really, really bad. And it's basically been, it set me back. But again, you know, this is a hobby. Um, it's not life or death. Uh, but um, a lot of the data that I collected since uh, end of September, early October, uh, much of it, uh, in particular around my 30 hour uh, M31 Andromeda Galaxy video is uh, not good. And so uh, I'm going to switch over here to the desktop and let's see if we can uh, explain what happened where it makes some sense. And But before I do, I want to hope everyone's having a great holiday uh, period. It's uh, 27th of December here. Um, New Year is quickly approaching and I'm making plans to be down at the dark site at uh, um, Goat Mountain Astronomical Research Station in Landers, California uh, to get some more imaging time because I really got to make up for the data I lost. Uh, so okay, let's go over to the desktop. Okay, so um, this really focuses around filters and my filter wheel. And I want to give a big shout out to Aunt, uh, Aunt Leah. I'm not sure how to say the name. Um, and I also want to give a shout out to uh, Agena Astro Products. I decided to purchase a uh, filter. Um, I was curious about what a three nanometer filter might look like compared, uh, in particular, hydrogen alpha is where I started, uh, compared to a, the seven uh, nanometer uh, ZWO uh, filter that I had. So uh, Agena uh, had it in stock, so I made the purchase, I guess, here around, uh, where is the date? November 15th. And uh, so in the process of, uh, and this is the particular filter I bought, and I want to say uh, I like this filter. Uh, Long story short, I'll be ordering the two other narrowband uh, filters to complete uh, the move to three nanometers. But I really want to give a shout out both to Aunt Leah and uh, Gina Astro for helping me with a problem which was self-inflicted and uh, really operator error. Again, uh, the trials and tribulations of being a beginner. Uh, so let's see if I can make some sense out of this. Um, I think I can bring this down for the moment. So um, here is uh, the filter wheel prior to installing the uh, new uh, HA three nanometer filter. And I was going to put it in to what I understood was position eight. Uh, in position one, I have the luminous filter and then RGB. And then here's my HA uh, in slot five. Uh, 7 nanometer and uh, S2 and O3, uh, both 7 nanometers. So anyway, I popped it in, uh, the new 3 nanometer filter, and uh, then I decided to take some uh, test shots. And uh, we don't want to go here yet, so let's come down from there. And so um, I started with my 7 nanometer. So here was my seven nanometer. Uh, you know, I just kind of pointed at Orion and um, just for a test uh, object. And I took a uh, couple of images, uh, looked at the histogram, um, and I said, okay, that looks about right. So my expectation when I moved to the three nanometer filter uh, that the bandpass being narrower, uh, three nanometers on either side of the peak frequency, uh, I expected less light. Uh, so I set up for the shot, and this is what I got. And I'm thinking, oh man, what's wrong with this filter? You know, and uh, you know what's going on here because you can see from the histogram, you know, I'm expecting a reduction in light, and uh, I'm actually. Uh, you know, this thing is pretty much blown out, you know. 
And so again, not knowing as a beginner what to expect from the different filters, uh, I really didn't do a lot of research. I will admit, I am a person that likes to try to figure it all out myself before I go out to the forums and everything. So, you know, I thought I had this one in the bag, but I didn't. And so, uh, what I, th and I contacted a gene and I put a big document together. I reached out on to, uh, uh, cloudy nights looking for some help uh, someone suggested well maybe I selected the wrong filter I go how could that happen I don't think that's true I said to myself I sent this document to Agena who passed it on to the uh, filter manufacturer and uh, they're very responsive and at the end of the day uh, I selected the wrong filter now how did that happen um, I'm still not sure um, but again, here was uh, the filter wheel prior to adding the 3 nanometer, and then I put the 3 nanometer in here, and then I went and I added, okay, a filter name in uh, NINA, Nighttime Imaging and Astronomy, which I use. So I see, okay, HA, I gave it a filter name, not thinking about an order here of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, you know, I figure, okay, well, I select the HA filter. It knows it's in uh, slot eight, uh, so it's going to use it. And, uh, well, actually, it selected the Loom, uh, Luminous filter. And so here's another view in Nina which uh, once I saw this view, um, it really became clear to me that Nina was thinking that the HA3 nanometer filter was actually in position one and that the luminous filter was in position two. And um, so somehow, even though physically, um, the three nanometer was in position eight and the luminous was in position one, Nina thought the HA was in position one and the luminous was in position two. So I'm still trying to wrap my mind around this. Um, I think in my Andromeda project where I was trying to do uh, luminous uh, RGB and HA, um, I really wasn't using the luminous uh, filter, I believe, when I was uh, shooting. I was using no filter, I think. So I'm trying to wrap my head around that part. Fortunately, I built a spreadsheet so I know what files, you know, so I can kind of piece it together. Uh, I'm thinking that maybe when I was shooting with the red filter, maybe I was really shooting with the green. It's a bit of a mess, but I just wanted to share uh, this mistake that I made and uh, and in particular uh, I really wanted to give uh, kudos uh, to Aunt, Aunt Leah and um, Agena Astro products uh, for their quick response and working with me and if the person on uh, Cloudy Nights that said I uh, selected the wrong filter happens to see this uh, you were 100% correct um, so anyway, one of the trials and tribulations of being a beginner. Uh, let me switch back over to this camera. Otherwise, you know, these things happen. And, um, you know, I made the decision early on that this was going to be a challenge. And uh, don't do something if you're going to get frustrated. And so where it was like a duh moment and uh, it was an unfortunate moment, I kind of said the reason I was purchasing the three nanometer filter was to learn something about filters. And I've certainly learned something about filters and in particular, making sure that the positions that you believe the filters are in within your position wheel line up with where, in my case, Nina uh, thinks uh, the filter is located. Uh, I was careless, I didn't take the time uh, to think that part through and again you know as a beginner uh, we don't know what we don't know and um, maybe I was moving too quickly I don't know but it's done 
it's a learning experience. Um, and uh, at the end of the day, I really like the three nanometer uh, filter. In some of the uh, uh, future videos, I'll show you some of the uh, comparison between the seven nanometer and the three nanometer filter. Uh, I am going to upgrade my other two uh, narrowband filters to three nanometers uh, along the early part of uh, 2022, and uh, you know, uh, and just kind of move forward. So uh, I was able to collect some additional data around the Heart Nebula uh, on one of my trips uh, down into Borrego Springs, which is a, a dark uh, Bortle Four site down in Southern California. I'm working on putting that together <clears throat> to create the image. I'm going to collect some more hours, so the total integration time with the correct filters uh, is uh, is uh, more. Um, and uh, I'll be sharing uh, that image once I get the additional time. And uh, I did find a uh, one of the uh, club members. Actually, I, I don't know if he's a board member, but he's a longtime person at. Uh, uh, Riverside Astronomical Society. Uh, if you look up Alex Astro, he's got a nice little write-up on how to use Pix Insight uh, with uh, narrow band filters, and he also has a document there on how to do one uh, shot color with Pix Insight. It was very helpful to me, and uh, that, along with my Adam Block um, uh, training, is helping move me up the ladder with uh, with Pix Insight. So. Um, I'm heading down for the new moon weekend down to, uh, as I said, Goat Mountain, GMARS. Uh, maybe cloudy weather, but we'll see. I'll try and get some imaging time. As I understand it, I'm running out of time uh, because as we start getting into March and April, the targets that my focal length uh, is good for are not going to be um, uh, present in the sky. So we'll see how that actually works. Um, other than that, I think uh, that's about it. Uh, hopefully there's some helpful information in here somewhere if you're a beginner. Uh, but, um, you know, mistakes are made. Uh, I made mine. I'm sure I'll make a few other ones. Uh, but I'm having a blast, uh, enjoying myself. Uh, it's a fantastic opportunity. I continue to meet people through the club. Uh, it's just been a, um, a great experience. Okay, if you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up. As always, uh, like, share, and subscribe. Um, other than that, oh, if you're kind of interested in Fuji X system, I've started a channel called Fuji Vagabond. If I could do a little self-promotion here where I'm going to start sharing my experience learning the Fuji X system. But other than that, I hope everyone has a great New Year. Uh, clear skies wherever you may be. And uh, we'll see you in uh, 2022. Other than that, till next time.